हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग इन माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई हैड एक्सप्लेन्ड कैरियर एडेड डिस्टेंस प्रोडक्शन स्कीम हाउ इट वर्क्स एंड व्हाट इज द प्रिंसिपल बिहाइंड इट टुडे आई विल एक्सप्लेन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कैरियर एडेड डिस्टेंस प्रोडक्शन स्कीम सो लेट अस रिकॉल द प्रिंसिपल सो दिस इज द सिंपल सिस्टम टू रेडियल फीडर्स सोर्सेस एट बोथ द एंड्स एज सोर्सेस आर एट बोथ द एंड्स वी रिक्वायर रिले at both the ends of the line and we are providing three step setting to the distance relays r1 r2 and these two relays also also for r1 it is 80% of the line in the first step remaining 20% plus 30% of the next section in second step and so on similarly we are providing setting to relay r2 now let us consider two faults f1 and f2 F1 and F2 both are in the second step of relay R1. Difference is F1 is internal fault whereas F2 is external fault. In carrier added distance protection scheme, the carrier signals that is very high frequency signals are transmitted from one end to the other end in order to cause simultaneous stepping of the relay at other end at both the ends. Now for F1 the F1 or F2, whatever where is the wherever is the fault, the relay which is near to the fault is called as local end relay, and the relay which is at the other end is called as remote end relay. So for fault F1, R2 will be local end relay, and R1 will be remote end relay. So if we don't use carrier added distance protection scheme, F1 will be cleared in the second step. Now in this contact diagram, first we don't consider this CR contact. That is carrier receive contact. CR is carrier receive relay contact. Now, if we don't use this contact, the scheme will be like this. We are assuming that whatever relay relay is here, that is having direction sense. So let us say we are using more distance relay at R1 as well as R2. So this is the contact diagram for three-step distance set in the distance protection scheme. For more relay, I have already explained it. Once again, I will revise it. This is the contact of third element Z3, first element Z1, second element Z2. This is step coil of the circuit breaker. This is timer. This is T2 and T this is T3. T2 and T3 are the normally open contacts of timer element. So for fault F2, sorry, for fault F1, this is in second step. So Z3 and Z2 will close. Z1 is open, so trip coil will not be energized instantaneously. Timer circuit will be energized, and after time T2, this contact will close, and trip coil of the circuit breaker will be energized. It means R2 is operating in first step for F1, and R1 is operating in the second step. Now we have to extend the tripping first zone of relay R1 up to end B. That is done by the carrier added distance protection scheme. And according to this, according to the connection of this carrier receive relay in this contact diagram, and its whether this contact is open or closed, the carrier distance protection schemes are classified into four categories. First is carrier transfer or carrier intertrip scheme. Second is carrier permissive intertrip scheme. Third is carrier acceleration scheme, and fourth is carrier blocking scheme. So let us start with the first scheme. That is carrier transfer or carrier intertrip scheme. In this scheme, this carrier receive relay contact, which is normally open, is connected at point P. It is connected between point P and P1, like this. Now, when fault F1 occurs, that is fault occurs in the second step, and it is internal fault. Remember, second step and internal fault. Say F1, then local and relay R2. Will transfer carrier signal to R1 so that the carrier receive relay immediately closes its contact. Now let us see how this scheme works. For fault F1, Z3 will close, Z2 will close, timer coil will be energized. So if we are not using the CR, then after time T2 trip coil of the circuit breaker will be energized. But 
from relay R2 carrier signals are transmitted to relay R1. So as soon as these signals are received, this contact closes. Now see what happens. As soon as this carrier receive contact closes, trip coil of the circuit breaker is energized immediately. So we can we will not wait for time. So at this end, circuit breaker will not wait for time t2 to, to operate. It will operate immediately as soon as carrier receive relay contact closes. So this is the carrier transfer or carrier intertrip scheme. Now let us say what are the advantages. Advantage is simple. Circuit breakers at both the ends operate simultaneously. Therefore, fault clearing is immediately there is immediate fault clearing and transient stability of the circuit of the system is improved. Now let us see what are the drawbacks. First drawback is carrier signals are transmitted over the faulty line. Fault has taken place in line AB and R2 is sending signal to R relay R1. So signal is transmitted over the faulty line. Second drawback is if due to fault anywhere in this power system, if by noise signal carrier receive operate carrier receive relay operates, then there will be unnecessary tripping of circuit breaker at R1. So this is due to noise signal generated by fault anywhere in the system. There is of there can be operation of circuit breaker at relay R1. So there is that is not required. So these are the two drawbacks of this system. So to overcome this or to partly overcome this, we are using second scheme that is carrier permissive intertrip. So in this scheme, contact P of carriers receive relay. Sorry, carrier receive relay contact is connected between point P and P2 like this. Like this. So what will happen now? When fault F1 occurs, Z3 will close, Z1 will close, carrier receive relay will receive this signals from R2 and this contact will close after receiving the carrier signals. So again, trip coil of the circuit breaker will be energized, but now this will be energized through Z3 and CR. Previously it was energizing, this trip coil of the circuit breaker was energizing directly from CR. Now it is energizing through Z3 and CR. What are the advantages are same, that is simultaneous opening of the circuit breaker at both the ends. Fault is cleared without any time delay and there is improvement in the transient stability of the system. Now drawbacks, first drawback remains as it is, carrier signals are transmitted over the faulty line. Second drawback, if due to noise signal generated in the system due to fault, if carrier receive relay or closes, then unless Z3 is closed, trip coil of the circuit breaker will not be energized. It means the closing of this contact will cause tripping of the will cause tripping of the circuit breaker or tripping of the relay only when Z3 has closed. So we are restricting the area which is causing mal operation to zone 3 only. Means if fault, if fault takes place in zone 2 or zone 3 of this system, then only the, the operation of this carrier receive relay will be effective. So that is the advantage or drawback partly overcome. Now let us see third scheme. Third scheme is carrier acceleration scheme. So in this scheme, the position of carrier receive relay contact is changed from P2 to P3. P1, P remains as it is. Now it is connected between P and P3. That is after Z2 contact. This is Z1. This is Z2. So when fault F1 occurs, Z3 will close. This is Z2 will close. Carrier signals are transmitted. So as soon as carrier receive relay receives the signal, it will close its contact. Now this trip coil is energized through Z3, Z2, and CR. Z3, Z2, and CR. The trip coil of the circuit breaker is energize. Now advantages same that is circuit breakers at both ends operate simultaneously fast fault clearing and transient, transient stability is improved. Drawbacks 
first domain remains as it is that is carrier signals are transmitted over the faulty line second drawback that is if carrier receive relay operates due to noise signal generated by fault anywhere in the system then unless z3 and z2 have closed its closing will not energize the trip coil of the circuit breaker it means faulty operation we are restricting to this second zone external fault only for internal fault it has to operate so if carrier receive operate really carrier receive really operates for this part also then there will be faulty operation of the circuit breaker so previous drawback is partly overcome so this scheme is better than first second scheme was better than first scheme third scheme is better than second scheme fourth scheme is carrier blocking scheme in this scheme connection for carrier receive relay is same from p between p and p3 but difference is in this case this carrier receive relay contact is normally closed it is normally closed now see what happens for fault f1 z3 closes z2 closes so as soon as z3 and z2 close this is already closed trip coil of the circuit breaker is energized it means we don't require carrier signal to be received by relay r1 from r2 for causing the operation of the circuit breaker but in this case where it is external fault that is zone 2 external fault f2 in that case local end relay transfers carrier signal to remote end relay so that operation of this circuit breaker is blocked and it is blocked by opening this contact so as soon as carrier receive relay receive the signal it opens the contact and this happens when there is external fault so if it is external flaw fault then only the local end relay will transfer the signal to the remote end relay and it will this contact will close so for external fault z3 z2 they will close and by after receiving the signal this contact will open so trip coil of the circuit breaker is not energized so advantages same three advantages simultaneous opening of the circuit breaker at both circuit breaker at both the ends fast fault clearing improvement in the transient stability now previous two drawbacks are overcome how here carrier signals are transmitted over the healthy line because for fault f1 there is no transfer of carrier signal it will be transferred carrier signals will be transferred only in case of fault f2 that is for external fault so previous drawback that is carrier signals are transmitted over the faulty line that is overcome and second drawback even if this carrier receive contact carrier receive relay contact which is normally closed opens then also fault will be cleared in the second step that is z2 has operated z2 had z2 has operated suppose this is open so after time t2 this contact will close and trip coil of the circuit breaker will be energized means fault will be cleared anyhow however it is in the second step so this is the best scheme or best carrier added distance protection scheme so friends till now in this high voltage line protection i have explained what is distance relay what are distance relay what are the different types of distance relay different methods for set time setting of distance relay that is definite distance distance time this step distance protection scheme their advantages and limitations and finally i had explained carrier added distance protection scheme next time i will explain the factors affecting the performance of distance relay friends if you feel this with this video lecture useful then please like it ask your friends class fellows your juniors your colleagues to subscribe to my channel for upcoming video lectures on high voltage engineering and power system protection if you want to make effective and efficient use of time then read my book on time management the link for the book is given in the description box i have launched a useful course for the students on udemy the title is boost your learning and become top achiever the link for the course is also given in the description box 
this course is very useful for the students who are preparing for the entrance exam and competitive exams thank you